The Seahawks pay Geno Smith three-year $105 million. He will earn $52 million in the first calendar year. And the Seahawks deal with Geno has a base value of $25 million per season. It's three years, $75 million, with $40 million fully guaranteed at signing, sources say. And he'll earn $28 million in the first year of the deal. I think this is different than the Saints going after Carr and the Giants signing Jones. The Saints went after Carr because that's their quarterback long term. Derek Carr is their quarterback long term for the, at least four years or three most. Yeah. Or three at the least. With Daniel Jones, it's a two year prove it. We want to see what you've done for us. And I think they're also invested in him for these next two years, $40 million. You know, they're invested in some $82 million guaranteed. With Geno Smith, the situation is so different because the Seahawks happen to be in a very unique situation where they traded a a former All-Pro quarterback for multiple first-round picks, and that quarterback was so bad in this place called Denver that they netted the fifth overall pick in the draft. Pete Carroll, there was a report that came out that said, man, him and Anthony Richardson had instant repertoire. I mean, they were clicking. I mean, what if the Seahawks decide to take someone like Richardson with the fifth overall pick? They sit him for one or two seasons behind Geno Smith, and then Richardson starts in Seattle. Now, that's a possibility. The Seahawks have so many avenues to get better, and maybe they don't even do that. Maybe they draft one of these top defensive prospects, and they just go all in. Because right now, Seattle's a great team. They just lack a run defense. They don't have a good defensive line at all. But you you have Geno Smith. You have good receivers. You have a great running back. Your tackles in Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas are solidified. I mean, the Seahawks, I think, paying Geno... I love that to pay Geno because Geno Smith deserved this money and he earned it, man. Going from drafted to the Jets, career in the mud, to the Giants having a chance, but the Giants fans booing him out the building because they didn't like how Eli was treated, mm-hmm. to the Chargers and then learning from Russ in Seattle. Geno Smith's story has been incredible and I'm glad that he got paid. Thanks. And Zach, what's the next? For what? This same career arc. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> Gino is better than Zach Wilson. Really? Yeah, he is. He's only an MVP can the first six weeks. Of the no, season. I'm I'm talking about to start the jet? career. Oh yeah, calm, <laughs> calm, <laughs> calm. Uh, shit. I guess I can I can talk about Gino Smith. Listen, of course, being the bitter Broncos fan, I won't do that. I got to give nothing but credit to to Gino Smith and what the Seahawks were able to to accomplish over there this season. Probably the most surprising team this season not named the New York Giants, and I say that for the fact that they traded their franchise quarterback and in the process were able to potentially acquire their future franchise quarterback. Mm -hmm. I believe that if I'm the Seahawks and I have the fifth overall pick and a C.J. Stroud is is available at that selection, I find it near impossible to pass up on that option. You take the the selection in C.J. Stroud, you allow him to sit. This allows C.J. to sit and learn under Geno Smith for one season, and then it allows you to move on and potentially even trade Geno to get future capital as well. I understand that what Geno Smith did this season was great. The only reason why I'm kind of shocked at the the price tag that they gave him is for the fact that they do have the fifth overall pick, and they do have the potential to select an Anthony Richardson or C.J. Stroud. That would be the only reason why I wouldn't expect them to invest long-term into Geno, especially after one season of this. But this season was just so great that I understand paying him. He was real. He was phenomenal, was able to make it to the playoffs. Yes, they did get bounced in the first round, but it was an unfavorable matchup against the Niners, who were just a better team on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. But me personally, I wouldn't have invested this money into Geno because of that top five pick. But now it allows you a luxury right now. You can still select at the number five pick a, a quarterback, or right now you address the defense that desperately needed help in terms of points per game. It was one of the bottom defenses in the league, but it still was able to overcome because their offense was so high scoring and so high potent that it didn't matter. Rushing, passing, they were clicking on all cylinders, and Gino was a huge catalyst to that as well. Got to give credit to Pete Carroll. I'm a Russell Wilson guy, but I can't ignore the obvious. Pete moves on from Russ. And goes and gives Geno the best career of his year, uh, the best season of his career. So it'll be interesting to see what they do at five. I'm still in favor of them selecting a quarterback, but now they have a little bit of flexibility. 
we got to give Geno some love. You got to. Because as a Jet fan in New York, I remember as a rookie, he led the NFL in game-winning drives, and we saw those flashes. He then spends a handful of years sitting behind Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, and Russell Wilson. But what do you know? Just like Jordan Love, those quarterbacks tend to pick up a couple of things, right? Here we go. And this well, last year, great, so you know, Geno was an MVP can to start the season, right? Lights out. As the year went on, he started to see a little bit of the poor decision-making habits maybe carry over some. But then against the 49ers in the plus, he played a solid game against the best defense in football. He had a fumble and an interception, but he played well. And they're even up at halftime versus a Niners team yeah. that was supposed to go with the Super Bowl we all expected. Geno Smith had a phenomenal season, right? Becomes a single season passing leader for the Seahawks. 30 TDs, limits the interceptions. I love his athleticism, though. His ability to move out the pocket, extend plays, and he's got great arm talent. I'm excited for him because this is a great deal for the Seahawks. It truly is. $25 million per season with $40 million only guaranteed over three years. Now he's going to have upwards of $30 million in incentives. So while it is three years, $105 million, he's going to be one of the lowest paid starting quarterbacks that's on that second contract. Technically for him, it's his fourth or fifth, or whatever it is, but second meaningful long-term contract. And for them, that gives them that optionality. You're not tied to him as much as a Jared Goff or a Carson Wentz where you have to have him starting long-term. With that fifth pick, I think the might go Jalen Carter. Obviously, he's going to slip. They're going to go defense. They're going to add to that defense. They're going to add more and more. And ultimately, for the Seahawks offense, they're going to be firm, right? You get, we'll see what happens with Rashad Penny this year. The running game is going to be elite. And so long as Kenneth Walker, exactly. Yeah. So if Rashad Penny needs to change a pace back, he can somehow stay healthy. That would be Walker's insane. The oh, he no, is Ken the guy. the guy, but Rashad is still out. good sure? enough that you can have the one-two. Hey, but Justin you want to lean on Kenny. Though, yeah. You want to lean on Kenny. That's a good point. And I think for the Seahawks offense, like I said before, I mean, it's just a matter of building up that offensive line more and more. Again, the development of those two rookie tackles in this last year. And in this division, I think they're going to be right back in prime position next year to make the playoffs. And that, to no small part, it's going to be kind of Geno Smith's development. This guy's 32 years old. He can get better and more reps. And I'm just happy to see him thrive. Sure. Well-deserved contract. And you always love to see the first number that comes out, usually the agent's number, yeah. three years, $105 million, And it's actually three years, $75 million. Yeah. And everything else is incentives. Yeah. So the yeah. fact you're getting Gino at a base of twenty five million dollars, come up. so come is up. an absolute steal. Yep. Um, so first of all, Gino well deserved. I mean, the fact his career arc is something we've rarely ever seen in the NFL. The fact he goes from a bust, second round bust, to backup to borderline franchise quarterback for the Seahawks team, saying that loosely, you know, but getting paid seventy five million dollars over three years is no laughing matter. Seahawks believe in him. He deserves it. Completed seventy percent of his passes this year. And honestly, they didn't even miss Russell Wilson for being completely no. you know transparent with each other here. Um, and it also gives the Seahawks flexibility. I think it was a win-win on both sides. Geno gets his money, he gets his big term contract he's been searching for his entire career. Mm-hmm. And the Seahawks still have the ability to be flexible, right? Only $40 million guaranteed, $25 million in base. And it's important to remember the incentives, which puts it up to $105 million, does not count towards the cap. It's just the $25 million in base and the guaranteed money that will count year to year. Let's talk about the fifth overall pick. It's a luxury. It's a luxury to have this pick. And because of that luxury, I think they should seriously consider drafting a quarterback there. I think this contract tells you they believe in Geno, but they don't believe in Geno enough to make him their long-term quarterback for the next five years, give him a ridiculous amount of guaranteed money and say, we're not even going to think twice about drafting a quarterback. Geno Smith is the absolute perfect, maybe the best bridge quarterback in the NFL right now. He's someone who could start in the Seahawks for the next one to two years, maybe even three if you really need to push it, and bring in a rookie quarterback who could learn and develop under a guy who has all the experience in the world, has gone through all the ups and downs in the NFL, and just the perfect mentor for a quarterback to come in and and be the perfect backup and really develop their skill set while still having, um, you know, a guy in front of you that could win games if you're a Seahawks fan. So at the fifth pick, I think the first three will be some way, some order of Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, and Will Anderson. Jalen Carter is a bit of a mystery box right now with his legal situation. He could go as high as one. He could drop out of the top 10. We really don't know uh, what's going to go on with him. But those three picks are solidified. So that means at the minimum, you'll have Will Levis or Anthony Richardson there available at pick five and potentially even both of them there available at pick five, depending on what happens um, with the Colts at four if they trade up or down. Um, so I would definitely be taking a quarterback there. I think the fact that you could get someone with insanely high upside like Richardson or if you're a Will Levis guy, it doesn't go – there is no – it's your golden ticket to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Having a quarterback on a rookie contract, we say it at nauseam at this point, but that is your golden ticket to get to a Super Bowl. And although there's a bunch of prospects that are probably worth it, Tyree Wilson I know is a guy they like, alike, like a lot. 
They need help on the defensive line. He's versatile. He could play inside or outside, get to the uh, get to the quarterback. He's a 7'2 wingspan. I know that's someone they've been linked to, but the fact that you could get a position of kind of need, the most important position, and a position that has an impact like no other in football and still have another first-round pick that's in the, the teens, the late teens. Broncos plus them. Yeah, I mean, this is a situation that rarely happens in the NFL. Usually, if you're picking top five, you need a quarterback, or your quarterback is injured, or there's a question mark there. This is a situation where that's not the case, where they're completely sold on Geno. They could take a shot at a quarterback, and if it doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world because you still have Geno, and you still have your other first-round pick that you could build up the defense and still be competitive this year. And as John mentioned, the only other team that really scares me in the MC West is, of course, the 49ers. We know they're without... Without a doubt, the juggernaut of that division. But the Rams, does that really scare anybody? They're going to have to make some cuts. We talked to uh, Jalen Ramsey is in name, Allen Ro- Allen Robinson, although he's pretty washed right now. The Cardinals might have the number one pick overall next year. So in the NFC, this is a Seahawks team that if they – if they continue to develop because they have a ton of rookies that they had from last year, draft well, sign free agents that, uh, you know, reasonable deals, there's no reason to not think they can make the playoffs next year while still developing a quarterback. And if he hits, you hit on Anthony Richardson. Now you have, you know, your franchise quarterback just waiting for you, almost like an Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love situation. I'm really fine with whatever direction the Seahawks go in because I think they can win with Geno Smith. You know, I think that they could go on a playoff run with Geno Smith if they build up that defense. When you watch Geno's tape this past season, it it wasn't simple things he was doing. He was making big-time throws, tight window throws to lock it, two DK Metcalf between two, three defenders. He was airing it out. He was making big-time throws. He played like one of those great quarterbacks in, in moments, and I would say most of the season. Half of the season he played at that level. There were certain times where he played against better defenses where he regressed, but I think if you get a better offensive line and, and another receiving option, because outside of DK and Lockett, at tight end and at the slot, they don't have somebody that is valuable, and if they have an offensive line, they can now run with Kenneth Walker and be more effective there. This defense, I mean, we're forgetting that. This All upcoming right. season, they're getting the press back. Talk to they're going to have Tariq Woolen, Kobe Bryant, Quadre Diggs, Jamal Adams. If Jordan Brooks, I think, is still really good. If they build up this defensive line and go with the Jalen Carter, or who knows, maybe they trade back because there's teams that want a quarterback at five. I'm insane. So Chris, and they Chris trade Gonzalez. back and they get another first-round pick next season. They can make some noise. And Brett Coleman was saying something on Twitter that I thought was interesting. Shout out, Brett. They could draft the DTR later the draft. Uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson from UCLA, so, who has a great arm, but needs some polish as a quarterback. And he's gotten better each year since he's been 18. So that could be an option in like the later rounds, the third or fourth round, where they can draft a guy like that. And he could sit under Geno. It doesn't always have to be one of these top prospects. It could be somebody that you can get in the lower rounds, and maybe they can be a bridge for a couple years. And ultimately, it's very hard to find a, a rare quarterback, uh, an elite-level talent. And while I think guys in this draft have that, it also could be a risk where the Seahawks can draft an impact defensive player now mm-hmm. and potentially win some playoff games with Geno. Because I think Geno is a good enough quarterback to win you playoff games if the roster is around him. I doubt. I only worry for the fact that – what? how many playoff games? Can he win you a Super Bowl? Can Geno win a Super Bowl? Unlikely. In the NFC, I think you can win multiple playoff games. There are a lot of holes in that team that can correct. Second cornerback, defensive line, those rookies developing. You can definitely go to the NFC Championship game with Geno Smith because, like you said, I talked to that as a build and move out of the pocket. 70% NFC Championship, that means they're, they're beating the, the 49ers. That's two playoff wins. That means that they're beating the Eagles. One of the two needs to happen to get there. Is that happening? The Eagles are the only Are they going to win their division? The Eagles are the only team that I don't think that they probably they can't beat. I think the Eagles have a great roster. And even then, we have to see the Eagles and how they look like after all these free agents. Seven on the You can't forget that the Niners defense. were just dominant all season and, and, long either. In the NFC, there's a bunch of just and They just went 0-3 marks. to the Niners this but season. A lot can change in the NFL. At face value, the Niners and the Eagles clear. But we see every other year, Niners get ruined by injuries. They win six, seven, eight games. Now we know they're at the playoffs. Seahawks win the division. And maybe they can go to the NFC Championship That's the game. Thing. I just don't see One it two happening. Key injuries. Really, it's, it's tough. It'll be tough to see that happen. I mean, I also didn't see them making the playoffs this year, yeah. and they did because Kyle right? Shanahan so and team stay fuck healthy. Do I know? I guess. That's true. Uh, uh, the 49ers typically don't stay healthy. 
But, but I do think the, the NFC, make the NFC, there's champion. a lot of They don't teams. stay healthy, and they made it to two straight NFC championship games. Respect. Let's respect them, please. Including their quarterback. Multiple. Three quarterback injuries. Nick Bosa and Fred Warner were healthy. Now they lose to Miko Ryans. Does Talanoa Ufanga regress with that loss? Well, I think 2020, they were injured. Better. 2021, and Jimmy did get injured down the stretch, and that hurt how, them in the playoffs. Think about how hard it is to have three straight though. awesome DCs. Yeah, and it cost them because he couldn't. He, he, he was. He, they have a lot of talent. Was, no, and they went to was, the Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, and they were able to make it to an MC chip. Yeah, I mean, the, the, reason, the consistency that the, the Niners show. You have to respect them and give them that acknowledgement. No, no doubt. But then you also have to look at the NFC, and there's a lot of teams with holes on the roster. Mm-hmm. I think that the NFC Dallas more is so, fine. Dallas has. I mean, listen. If you build up a defense that can tame Dallas's offense, you're in a good position. The Niners and already now, have that. Yeah, and huh? the Niners already have that. They're not. Yeah, yeah. And they did do no, that. But that's what I'm saying. The Seahawks, their secondary is still solid for sure, and and Jamal coming back. That's no. That's not something to just like, gloss I think, over. I think when you talk about Dallas, for example. They lost Kellen Moore. Mike McCarthy's not calling plays. He has more responsibility on him. Mm-hmm. How do they react to that? Uh, you, you're not. Sh- their weapons to me are underwhelming. They need somebody else. You look at the Eagles. They're an elite team. We know they're that. Probably going to get somebody. The else. NFC South. Nobody in that division worries me. No, I'm with you. The NFC North. Saints. I. Not really. I, that's I think another the Saints, thing. Saints, Saints, Saints and Seahawks are in the same tier. But that's what I'm saying. There, there's teams that are all around the same tier. Yeah. And that's why, to me, I think the NFC is wide open. Where. That, that's why the Giants made the move they did. They understand that, listen, if we have a killer draft and we sign one, two guys of free agency, we can make a run at this thing in the NFC. Because they understand it's, it's a weak conference. And a team that probably shouldn't have – I mean, who were the four starting quarterbacks in the NFC in, in the divisional round of the NFC? Jalen Hurts. Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones Kirk Cousins. Kirk and, and Brock. You know, for you, well, respect, but I, that's – On a year-to-year basis, I can Dak, see that changing franchise from, quarterback. Jalen Hurts, franchise quarterback – Top seven, top six quarterback. Daniel Jones right now is got an extension. 16th. Still, the, the verdict's out on him being a franchise quarterback in the Giants' eyes. And Brock Purdy, who we cannot just simply overlook for the fact that he was the last pick in the draft. I'm he overlooking Brock Purdy so he's much. 17th best quarterback. I'm sorry. You I'm said sorry. something right there. The Saints and the Seahawks are in the same tier. I don't think that's true. Why not? Dennis Allen could be gone a year, whereas Pete Carroll... The definition of stability, and you have this Broncos pick. Is when is your own? When is Pete Carroll? When is Pete Carroll retiring? So much He's better. the oldest coach in the NFL. I'm not, not even worried about. Not I think Pete Carroll's better coach, but that Saints defense yes. is so much better than the but Seahawks. What right if now. they hit on another draft the way they just? They could, did. but I, but we've seen for fucking like every year the Saints defense is good. It doesn't matter. Like the Seahawks, you have to project their defense to be good. The Saints, you're projecting, but you also have history telling you they're a good defense as long as Dennis Allen is there. 